This is the Keychron K8 Atikal Mechanical Keyboard. It's TKL. TKL. 10 kilos. You're 10 kilos. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Reese, and welcome to my first tech-related video. So today, I have a little package here from Keychron. Had a little package. I, feel, I, sh I shot the unboxing first before I did the actual commentary because I wasn't too hands-on familiar with the product. I had to write everything down, okay? I had to get to know this keyboard. This was long overdue, but finally, I've been able to upgrade to a mechanical keyboard. Long have I waited for an upgrade. I've been using membrane keyboards my whole life or membrane keyboards that imitate the feel of mechanical keyboards. Like this one right here, my Logitech Gaming G213 Prodigy. Still going pretty strong. I had this for like uh, two years now. Spacebar is a little broken. There are times where it presses spacebar and it doesn't input anymore. This happened a few days ago when I was editing my first video, which you can <coughs> check out right here or down below in the description. So let's check this out. Let's get to the unboxing. I got this from Shopee for 3,590 pesos. Got it on sale actually for 500 pesos less. Would usually cost around 4,000 pesos. But thankfully, I was just in time for that sweet, sweet sale. So it comes in this gorgeous black box that I love. I love these types of boxes where the lid just slides up, you know, classy. Inside, you're welcomed with a quick startup guide. Extra keycaps for Windows users. Replacement keycaps for your escape key and the light key. A keycap remover. USB Type-C to Type-A cable for charging and for wired mode. If you're not a fan of latency, and the quality is a little generic, but it's fine because I'm gonna use it wirelessly. I'm going for that, you know, minimalist look. And finally, boom, the Keychron K8 Bluetooth mechanical keyboard itself. Out of the box, it looks and feels absolutely fresh. It's got a little heft to it. It's a little chunky. I love the keycaps. It's got a beautiful monochromatic look, which I'm personally after with that signature orange escape keycap. The font that they used, oh, it's such a really clean font. I love that. It's got a plastic build to it. It's pretty durable plastic. I was expecting an aluminum build for the frame. Guess I didn't do my research there. Just tapped on that add to cart button when I saw the price. Checked out as fast as I can. <laughs> but you can buy the RGB version plus aluminum frame for 800 pesos more. So let's get into the features. The Keychron K8 is an 87 TKL layout. That means it's not built with a numpad which I personally like because, again, I'm going for that, you know, minimalist aesthetic for my desk. Oh, aren't we fancy? And I don't use a numpad. I don't code or anything. But yeah, it's a pretty standard TKL layout with a familiar Mac OS function key assignments. The only sort of uh, unique keys are these three up here. On the upper right side, which is the print screen key, voice assistant key with either Cortana or Siri, and the light effect switch, which we'll get into in a bit. It has five rubber feet on the base. There are two pairs of kickstands, so it has three height options. It does feature a Bluetooth wireless mode and a wired mode. To change modes, you can use the mode toggle switch located on the left flank of the keyboard. So this does feature Bluetooth 5.1. It says on the manual that it has 10 meters of operating distance within an open space. I tried typing in the next room and it was still inputting. I don't even know why you'd want to use this keyboard and your computer in separate rooms, but there you go, you have that information. You can connect this keyboard to a total of three devices. I don't have a second computer, so I didn't get to try that out, but it does support iOS and Android that I tested. 
To put it on Bluetooth pairing mode, just hold on function and hold either one, two, or three for four seconds, depending on which key you want to assign the device to. After pairing, you can easily switch devices with just a tap with those same keys. Next to the mode toggle switch is the OS toggle switch for changing the compatibility mode from either Windows or Mac OS. Finally, next to that is the USB Type-C port for charging and for wired mode. This keyboard does come with a 4000 milliamp hour battery, which promises about 240 hours of typing without the backlight on. I've been using it for over a week without a single charge and the brightness of the backlight is like maxed out and it hasn't died yet. So yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Here are the behaviors of the LED status indicators and what they mean. P.S. Next to that is the caps lock indicator. So it just, you know, lights up blue when you're in caps lock. So I got the white backlight version of this keyboard. RGB isn't a huge selling point for me personally. I guess I got, you know, too old for the gamer aesthetic, <laughs> you know. I still play video games from time to time. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a matter of preference. But this does come with 16 lighting modes, which you can change from the upper right side of the keyboard. One of my favorite is this reactive sort of ripple one. How fun is that? But yeah, it's got plenty of effects from waves, breathing, this flashy one, or just plain static. If you want to change the brightness of uh, the backlight, you can definitely do that with function in either F5 for dimmer or F6 for brighter. Doesn't go too bright. I'd say it goes fairly bright, but it's not a big deal for me personally. I can see it just fine in the dark, so, you know, I don't need it to go any brighter. So let's talk keycaps. I love the keycap design on this keyboard. I love the two-tone look, you know, the font. These keycaps are ABS, so, you know, over time, you know, like uh, the oils from your fingers are gonna become apparent on the keycaps because in the case of ABS keycaps, you know, you're, you're touching the keycaps paint than the actual plastic. But you know, you can buy replacement keycaps pretty easily because uh, this is a TKL keyboard. So this version of the Keychron K8 is the non-hot swappable version, meaning you can change the keycap switches. There is a hot swap version of this keyboard that is available for about five, Jesus, 5,900 pesos. But yeah, this keyboard has red Gateron switches, so the sound level is pretty quiet. The keystrokes are going to be consistent compared to the blue and the brown switches, which are also available for about the same price, 3,990. But again, I reached that sale period, so I got it or 3590, 400 pesos less. So let's give this puppy a quick sound test because that's what keyboard YouTubers do. So they can be pretty darn quiet when you type gently, which is definitely what I'm going after since I do voiceovers for a living. I do my recording and editing on my desk. 
with my Rode NT1, which is a, you know, it's a, it's a condenser microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. So yeah, it can, it can be pretty sensitive when it comes to, uh, to like uh, noise. So in conclusion, I love this keyboard. All right, it's a, it's a great keyboard. This is a first for me. This is my first mechanical keyboard and I love it. I've been using this keyboard for a week now, mainly to do productive tasks, a little bit of gaming. I'm really satisfied with it. Feels much nicer than my G213 Prodigy. My typing was immensely more accurate. The typing accuracy problem that I had where I hit the wrong key when I'm typing or playing video games, that's greatly reduced with a Keychron K8. I did notice a slight issue with, uh, with, the, with the keyboard height. My, my wrists, uh, it, it, it cramped for a bit when I was writing uh, the script. Thankfully, they sell official Keychron wrist rests for this keyboard. They're quite, uh, they're quite inexpensive as well. So I'm definitely gonna buy one of those soon. But overall, as a first time mechanical keyboard user, it was absolutely worth it for me. Maybe I overspent a little bit. I could have gone with an alternative uh, keyboard that has the same features that is hot swappable, which costs about a thousand pesos less. But dude, ah, I, I love this design, the dual tone, you know, the gray and the dark gray. I love the font. It's uh, it's it's what I'm looking for. So that concludes my first tech review slash unboxing video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping to do more of this kinds of videos soon. Leave a comment below if you have like uh, suggestions, any concerns about this video. Show some support by subscribing and I'll see you on the next one. Good mental health to you all.